Well, welcome to um, another edition of Riding Shotgun with Tupper, and you're not the only one riding today. One of my dogs is running alongside of us. So if you hear barking, it's uh, it's this dog. Um, it's, we got rain. It's going to be kind of wet back here. All the crops are out, and uh, so we're just driving along talking about uh, the, what I wanted to talk about was the word forthcoming. You know, in our business. Uh, media business, communication business, uh, fewer and future, fewer coaches are forthcoming. More people are guarded than ever, it seems to me. I think social media has had something to do with that. People are, uh, coaches are a little paranoid about saying this or that. And, um, and um, you know, it used to be they would tell you a lot of stuff, even if some of it was off the record. Uh, it's still valuable because it, it gives you some perspective about what to watch for and you know a little bit maybe more about what's going on behind the scenes but two coaches that have been pretty forthcoming um, and it's helpful and it's appreciated uh, Garrick McGee the offensive coordinator from the Illini football team you know he's shared some really interesting little stories and vignettes about um, some things that are going on that when you listen to them and kind of stitch them all together um, makes it more um, understandable about you know I've been critical of some of the play calling maybe you have as well um, it's not usually as simple as what you might think I'll give you an example on one you remember the play uh, I think it was in the third quarter uh, Illinois Iowa football game this is the play where um, Jeff George was um, uh, sent Rayvon Bonner out of the backfield on a wheel route and um, kind of under through it and I think it ended up being picked off and and that was uh, that was a tough one and but but um, a, a lot of things happened on that play you know one of the things that happened was Larry Boyd the left tackle who the offensive line played well man that was encouraging the way they ran the ball and they gave up I think one sack and just really did a nice job anyhow Larry Boyd dropped back too far which made Rayvon Bonner have to circle back further to get out and start that wheel route, which screwed up the timing. Lewis Dorsey kind of ran the wrong route. Um, there were some things that happened there. Now, Jeff George didn't throw a good pass, so, so I get all that. But when you start to think about the things that break down on a play that might have resulted in a better outcome, that play could have been a touchdown, by the way. Um, you know, um, listening to him explain it was really important. And listen to him talk about the offensive line. You know, he's thrilled with what this offensive line can become and what it is becoming. Um, you know, they, they started um, uh, Vidarian Lowe for the first time. He played right tackle. Three true freshman starters. One redshirt freshman starter, Doug Kramer, the center returning from injury. And one junior, Nicky Algretti, who got to move back to his preferred position of guard and played really a good game. Um, you know, th that group... If they stick together, um, particularly those freshmen, that's four years of them um, with bookend NFL size tackles. Uh, man, oh man, that's that's really something to think about. The only guy you have to replace in two years is Nick Allegretti, and not that that's a small thing, but um, you know you've got a little bit of time to look for somebody that you can plug in there that can really do the job at that position. But um, in just talking about how they've had to simplify uh, so many of the play calls because it's just the freshmen are a little overwhelmed, you know. Um, it's it's been difficult for them, and they un they understand that. And yeah, they'd like to run some more exotic plays and some different plays and some plays that take longer to develop. But um, um, they, you know, with with the freshmen, it's been difficult. Um, you know, his stories about Jeff George, his stories about Chase Crouch. He loves Chase Crouch, and it was hard for him to tell Chase Crouch they were going to go in a different direction at quarterback. Needed to be done. Uh, no doubt about that, but um, he's really complimentary of of Chase's reaction to it. Chase come to him, uh, came to him and said, you know, I, I just want to help us do something. Find something for me to do. And uh, you saw that one play where he was in a tight end. I think you're going to see more of that, and I still believe that you may see a, a situation for him at quarterback in a goal line situation perhaps where he goes in. I think everyone would agree he gives you tremendous effort on every play. That's never been a question with him. Um, so um, that was kind of appreciated and has been all season, really, um, his willing, Garrick McGee's willingness to share some insights and stories. Um, I'm kind of going a little slower than usual back here because we got rain and 
I'm waiting for, I'm, I'm on okay right now, but I'm waiting for, uh, to see if I bump into some slop. I may have to turn around. But um, at any rate, the other, you know, we hosted, uh, I do a radio show here in Decatur on Thursday nights from five to seven. Um, and, um, and once a year we do that, a special edition of that show on Sunday from six to eight and the head basketball coach comes over and that's, we've done that for 27 years in a row, starting with Lou Henson and every year, um, you know, Lou, Lon, Bill, Bruce, John, and now Brad Underwood uh, came over for his first one of those and he brought Jeff Alexander, his uh, assistant to the head coach with him. Uh, terrific night, we had a great crowd, those guys were great. And Brad, I have learned, is uh, very forthcoming. He will talk to you about things, he will let you in on some insights, even if they're um, maybe partially off the record, but just so you know what's going on. And man, that is so helpful you know, to know why this guy is doing this or why this guy isn't doing that um, because of maybe something he's, he's let you in on, which, you know, doesn't leave you in the dark and make you guess uh, in print or, or in social media or whatever or, or in a, a, a deal like this. So um, very, very appreciative. Obviously, this is a big week and weekend for them recruiting-wise with Io coming in this weekend. I mean, it's between Illinois and Wake Forest. Um, I think Illinois would benefit by having a commitment from somebody. They're hoping that uh, Elias Valton in the, the Finnish uh, shooting guard uh, might be somebody who would commit. Uh, it's between Illinois and Arizona State. This is a 6'5", 6 6'6", 6 6, uh, haven't stood next to him, so I don't know, shooting guard. And um, a guy that uh, that they're pretty high on, um, they think is really, really a good player. Um, a guy we, of course, don't get to see here. So, um, you know, and then Io comes in, and Io is, uh, you know, feels like must get for them. I mean, he's a terrific player, he's an in state kid. Um, but, you know, other schools, and this is a Ben Illinois' problem, this is one reason they made a coaching change, is that, you know, they've lost their NBA pipeline, they've lost their NCAA tournament uh, pipeline, you know. So they're telling kids to commit on faith and and that's hard um, for some kids when other schools are in their ear about this and this I know some people want to know or I've had some people ask me are other schools using the FBI investigation and this link however faint uh, between Brad Underwood and Lamont Evans from Oklahoma State are they using that negatively in recruiting and I asked the question Sunday uh, and was told uh, they have they don't have any evidence of that um, you know they know that schools some schools are not above that but they're not um, you know they're not hearing anything like that or they're not sensing anything like that so you know we'll see this is a big weekend for them obviously a big week and um, and they will play you know we don't see exhibitions on the basketball schedule any longer they will play two of the NCAA secret uh, super secret scrimmages you know the NCAA does not allow you to to uh, say who you're going to play, when you're going to play, where you're going to play, and they don't allow you, coaches to talk about it at all. Um, no media is allowed to be there. No fans are allowed to be there. I don't even understand why there's such secrecy about it. What harm would there be, even if you close the doors, uh, what harm would there be in knowing that, you know, Illinois played Xavier one year in one of those or played um, uh, Dayton one year in one of those. And so, but Brad... Uh, did say they're going to play two, one at home uh, at, at the State Farm Center, one on the on the road. And um, so, you know, those are both coming up later in the month of October here as they gear toward that uh, November 10th basketball opener against Southern. So, um, you know, practice is going well. He said Laron Le Black is back full speed. Uh, DeMonte Williams back full speed. Um, still waiting on Tijon Lucas, who's in concussion protocol. He ran into... Uh, or Mark Smith's arm or elbow ran into his noggin. Um, you know, play, they're just reaching for the ball, it happens. And uh, that's what slowed him down. But he'll he'll be back as soon as the medical people clear him. I don't think it'd be too long. And, uh, but he was 
said Laron came back with, like with a vengeance. He thinks Laron can be one of the top rebounders in the Big Ten and one of the better rebounders in the country. Um, he thinks he's really, really come a long ways and um, is playing great. Very high on him, very high on Michael Finke, among others. But of the you know of their few returning players, they only have five returning players. And uh, and he really likes Aaron Jordan. You know, he th he thinks Aaron Jordan's good and um, has been really good for them in practice. Can shoot the ball, um, plays defense for him. Um, so you know, it was was fun having him over. Fun visiting with. Uh, with Brad and with Jeff Alexander. I've known Jeff for a while through his Lincoln ties, but um, all that stuff was good. So anyhow, um, appreciate you riding along today. Thanks very much. Uh, my dog is still <laughs> running along. I should probably take the camera out and show you my dog. Let me do that real quick here. Can you see my dog? Hey Alf. Hi baby. Anyhow, uh, thanks for riding along. Appreciate it. And uh, we'll do it again next week. See you later. Bye.